Now, like seriously, you guys, I want you to master this position on the board right now. I want you to remember it because we are going to do this with black pieces and this will improve your tactical vision as well as your chess understanding. So the position that you're seeing on the board right now is from a chess gambit called the Boran Kisariski Gambit. And I didn't mean to fool you with my thumbnail. You will stop playing the Stafford Gambit with black pieces. You will love this, but let's see. One disadvantage of starting with the Russian defense like this in an effort to transpose into the Stafford Gambit like what you're seeing on the board right now is that White may fear losing his e4 pawn and defend it with knight to c3. Not at this stage but let me show you. The main problem with the Stafford Gambit is that it arises from a major opening called the Petrov defense which has many refutational lines. White may fear losing his pawn on e4 which is usually the case in the Petrov defense. I mean after knight takes d6 then knight f3 and knight takes. And so instead of allowing black to take the pawn on e4, white players may avoid the Petrov line with the move knight c3 which defends the e4 pawn and possibly transposes the game into the four knights variation. So that's one downfall of relying so much on the Stafford Gambit. And that's why instead of playing knight to f6, I suggest you play a non-committal move which will not force white to defend the e4 pawn. Ladies and gentlemen, the move is bishop c5. Completely sacrificing your e5 pawn. Here white won't be worried about protecting his a4 pawn. So you're more likely to see them taking and now that's when you play knight c6 which is officially called the bush gas gambit. Let me turn on the leeches database so that you can see the top played moves by white. So as you can see knight takes c6 is by far a top played move after which I recommend you just take and here you have a position which is similar to the Stafford gambit except that in the Stafford gambit it is our knight which is developed already by move number four while in the bush gas gambit it is the bishop which is already developed by move number four. So that's the key difference. And now I'm going to divide this lesson into the following sections. As you can see in the latest database, the top played move is bishop c4, which we are going to look at first, followed by knight to c3. We are going to look at that as well. Then pawn to d3. We're also going to touch on that. And finally, we are going to look at what to do against pawn to c3. So I call this the bush gas gambit accepted. I mean, when white decides to take your pawn on e5 and your knight. So let's begin. White just played knight takes c6 and then we took back with our pawn on c6. The top played move you are going to see here is bishop c4, preparing to castle shot. Well first, an immediate way to punish your opponent is to straight away sacrifice your bishop on f2. And that's check. So if king takes, you now go queen d4 check. At the end of the day, you're going to win the bishop and forcing white to be out of his prep. You can already see that white already lost his right to castle. So he's going to play the rest of the game with his king on the center while you'll be able to castle short and centralize all your pieces. Not to mention that there are so many weaknesses for white in this position. For example, if queen f3, the pawn on d3 falls. If d4, you have knight takes e4. But after bishop c4 by white, you don't necessarily have to take on f2. You have better moves. I suggest you go knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4. And in this position, white may either defend this pawn with knight c3, d3, or just ignore it by castling short and pin your knight later in case of knight takes e4. The correct move here for white is pawn to f3, by the way, which looks weird. And no one is going to play that, I can promise. So let's begin with castle short. Well, it is not advisable to take on e4. If your king is still on the center, maybe that knight in some lines can be pinned to your king. That's not the case here, but the best you can do in this position is to go knight g4. Wanting to go queen h4 next and mate on h2. That's not going to happen because your opponent will play pawn to h3, but that's a blunder. Because now you can simply sacrifice your knight on f2, attacking the queen, and also threatening to do a little discovery because of your bishop on c5. So if rook takes f2 which is what they do well you can simply win that rook and after king takes you go queen d4 check once again winning the light squad bishop on the spot so after knight g4 instead of pawn to h3 you may see white playing queen f3 which is the top played move as you can see in the leeches database so queen f3 aims at mating on f7 so well here i recommend you go knight e5 defending your f7 square and also double attacking the queen and the bishop Again, if they play queen b3, which is the top played move, now you simply go pawn to h5. There's nothing white can do, by the way, to chase this knight 
out of the e5 square. They can't play pawn to f4 because the f pawn is pinned to the king by our bishop. So let's say they go pawn to c3, intending to go d4 next. Well, there's a cold-blooded move, you guys, in this position, which you should know with all your eyeballs. Knight to f3. What a brilliant move, you guys. The idea is that if gf, now you go queen g5 check, then king h1 only move, and then queen f4. The thing is that this pawn to c3 move blocked the vision of white's queen. So now you are threatening to take the pawn on f3 with check. For example, if pawn to d4, you have queen takes f3 check, king g1, then simply bishop h3, and white cannot stop this mate with his elbow or his toes. Let's say if they don't play pawn to d4 and try to play an in-between move bishop takes f7 check, first of all, don't go king f8 because white has bishop g6 in some lines and queen f7 check, exchanging your queens, what and what. Just go king d8. And after pawn to d4, attacking your bishop, now you go queen takes f3 check, king g1 and bishop h3 once again. Let's say bishop g5 check. Well, you go bishop e7, blocking the check. And after bishop takes, king takes, queen e6 check is the only thing that white can do to stop the mate on g2. So at the end of the day, we'll just capture white's queen and how beautiful is this, you guys? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, so that was all about the bishop c4 line. Again, where you go knight to f6 or simply take on f2 if you are not a risk taker. Anyways, instead of bishop c4, white can also play knight c3. Now, when you look into the leeches database, most black players play knight to f6 here. Well, in the bush gas gambit, in this exact line, knight to f6 makes no sense to me because the pawn on e4 is already defended. So knight to f6 will be a one nothing move. Maybe white can even play pawn to e5 in the near future. I don't know. But the move that I recommend and if white defense is e4 pawn is knight to h6 of course provided that this diagonal is not open because they are going to take your knight and double up your pawns so after you play knight h6 the top played move in the latest database as you can see is bishop c4 which is a blunder so that's one beauty about this uncommon gambit you guys almost every move that your opponent will make will be a blunder so why is this a blunder because you can now play knight g4 intending to capture on f2 so why to be forced to castle short and that's when you go queen h4 triple attacking the f2 pawn with all your pieces and also threatening to mate on h2 so if h3 well you can simply go knight takes f2 attacking the queen and if rook takes, you simply take with your queen. And after king h1, you go bishop e6. Why bishop e6? First of all, this bishop is annoying. And you also want to develop your light squared bishop, connect your rooks, and at best, castle long. That's why we go bishop e6. Inviting white to take. By the way, if bishop d2 is played, you can just castle long and continue developing your pieces rapidly, advance your kingside pawns and destroy the kingside for white. But if bishop takes, you simply take back and after d3, you castle short bishop d2, then rook f7, wanting to create a little battery. Look at white's pieces which are doing nothing on their initial squares, you guys. White's position is very passive. This is a clear win for black. Just involve all your pieces into the game. That's the secret. So again, after you play knight h6 and then white plays bishop c4, you simply go knight g4. And after castle short, you go queen h4. Again, pawn to h3 and knight takes. This time, instead of rook takes f2, white may play this top played move here, queen f3. Well, I suggest you just go knight takes h3. This is double check, by the way. Your bishop and knight are checking the king. So king h2 maybe, knight f2 again. If the king goes back to g1, you have mate in one. And if queen h3, ha, well, you can just take that queen at best, but you have a better move, bishop d6 check. And after king g1, only sensible move. Now you take the queen with tempo. And after gh, you go queen g3 check. King h1, then queen h2, checkmate. All right, so back to this position where you don't play knight f6. I said go knight h6. And we saw why bishop c4 is a blunder because you can simply go knight g4. But after you play knight h6, white may play pawn to d3, the second most played move, threatening to take your knight on h6. Well, once again, just play knight g4. And after bishop e3, the only sensible move, you now take the bishop with your knight. And after fe, you go bishop takes. Queen f3, don't go queen g5 to protect your bishop because white can play 
pawn to h4 with a temple. So go bishop g5. This will just be a normal game. And Stockfish says black has a slight advantage in this position because of how quickly your pieces can develop. For example, you just ensure that white doesn't control the center. That's what your bishop and your queen is stopping. Next, you are going to plant your bishop on d4 and start getting some initiative. For example, if I were you, I would start thinking of how I can develop my queen's rook. For example, rook a5, then rook g5. How can I do this? By simply going pawn to a5 first. This is called strategy in chess, you guys. In case of pawn to a4, now a new weakness has been created on b4. And the game will continue from there. I'll play rook a6 if need be and trade off all the pawns as highlighted. So this was all about the knight's line. So now it is time to look at what to do against the third most common move pawn to d3. Well, against pawn to d3, I do not recommend to resign and <laughs> I'm just joking, but just like in the knight c3 line where white defends his e4 pawn, even in the d3 line, you can see that white is defending the e4 pawn. So it makes no sense for us to go knight to f6. That would be a one nothing move because we are going to be attacking nothing on e4. That's why I recommend that you immediately go pawn to a5 first a committal move the idea is that if e takes a5 now you can simply develop your light squared bishop with tempo you are planning to castle long at best that's the best you can do in the bush cast gambit if things don't go your way bishop e2 they want to castle short you go queen h4 wanting to take on f2 so they have to castle short and now this is when you go knight to f6 remember the idea is not to castle short but to castle long so bishop e3 for example now you go bishop d6 wanting to mate on h2 let's say g3 you go queen h3, bishop f3, you go knight g4. <laughs> so bishop takes, bishop takes, f3. You can even sack your bishop here. I mean, just keep on putting more pressure. hg, queen takes, thus check, king h1, queen h4 check. It is up to you to force a draw here or maybe you can play something else. For example, bishop h5. The plan is still to castle long. You will play rook f8. And it is very easy for white to go wrong here, you guys. For example, if rook g1 attacking your queen, there is mate in one. And if bishop f2 attacking your queen once again, white's queen is dead. This is check. The king cannot move. So the only move will be queen takes f3 and white will lose his queen. Anyways, if white plays queen e1, wanting to trade queens, Again, his queen falls because you can now take on f3 with check. Once again, white's king cannot move. So they have to take with their rook, after which you now take the free queen and you're winning. So that was all in the d3 line. So just remember to go pawn to a5, not knight to f6. By the way, after you play pawn to a5, you can see that the top played move is knight c3. They don't even take on a5 most of the times, but hey, I have a solution for you. If knight c3, the top played move, this is when you can develop your knight because now you have an option to play knight g4. Your pawn is already developed nicely on a5. So if bishop g5, for example, pinning your knight to the queen, now you can simply go pawn to a6. If bishop h4, white should be very careful because in some lines that bishop can be trapped like this. But if they choose not to go bishop h4 but instead take your knight on f6, don't worry, go queen takes f6 and bishop e2, you castle short, they do the same. And because of the possibility for white to go d4, you just go bishop d4 yourself. Next, you will develop your pieces as highlighted and continue with life. In this position, stockfish favors black, period. So this should be enough for the d3 line, you guys. Now let's look at the last line for the accepted version of this gambit. This is where white plays pawn to c3, which is a little bit challenging. And you should know what to do against this. It's not just about tricks, you guys. At the end of the day, you need to play chess. So if white plays correctly, let's say with c3, intending to go d4 next. Well, I just recommend you play normally, starting with queen e7, attacking the e4 pawn. If d4... You can simply take that pawn and now material is equal you guys you just play your cards both of you don't have queens here so you're just playing chess but if you really want to remain aggressive and let's say play some dubious moves instead of going queen e7 you can try this dubious move knight to f6 allowing white to go d4 at worst you want to win three pawns for a piece this is a dubious way of playing this gambit, you guys. I don't recommend, but just for fun, you can try this in Blitz and Bullet. So 
knight takes e4, you sacrifice your bishop, which is already a blunder, you guys. Because now you can take the queen and take white's rook on h1. Let's say after king e1, knight takes, pawn to g3, they want to win back their piece. So you just castle short. Don't worry about this, you have rook e8 check. If they go king f1, you can go bishop a5. Let them take your knight. This will be hard for them. In this line, you are assured of equalizing. For example, if king g1, you can go rook e1 check and you'll be able to win a free bishop. If white plays king f2, just give a check. They can't go back. Otherwise, they will lose their dark squad bishop. And still, if king f3, you can still equalize material like this. So it's not much of a stretch even if you go with knight to f6 once again. Anyways. Well, after knight takes e4, if white doesn't take your bishop, and let's say they play an in-between move, queen e2, you just cast a shot anyways. If queen takes e4, you now trap the queen to the king, white's queen is dead. They're not going to do that, so they better take the bishop, but well, you can still work it out here. Rook e8, you continue putting pressure, you can see this pressure coming, bishop e3, knight takes c5, the bishop can't take our knight, and now we are up a pawn, you guys, with a perfect position, I would say. Look at black's king on the center, from here you can just try to work it out, develop your pieces on the most active squares, you guys. For example, you can even win a queen here if white is not careful. Anyways, so this video you guys was all about the accepted version of the bush gas gambit But as you might have already seen in the leeches database after e4 e5 knight f3 and bishop c5 The top played move is bishop c4 which i'm going to cover in my next video on the bush gas gambit Yeah, there are other videos on youtube that covers this line But my aim is to do it better than those guys in a way that a layman would easily understand stay tuned and be sure to hit the like button if at all you enjoyed watching this video don't forget to subscribe to my channel if at all you haven't already cause that's what motivates me to keep on doing this you guys thank you for watching my video until next time bye bye